the Apostle Paul, we looked at last week, said, Other foundation can no man lay other than the one that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So we want to make sure that, that we're building on the foundation of Jesus and not on the foundation of other stuff. And we're going to look at that um, as, as we go along. Uh, because the, the church, especially the church in America, um, has been guilty over the past hundred years or so of, of building or attempting to build um, on all kind of foundations. And that's one of the reasons that the church seems to be going through this little crisis right now. If you haven't noticed, the church is kind of going through a little crisis. Um, but Jesus said, on this rock, I'll build my, my church and the gates of hell won't prevail. So the church will make it through. Somebody say amen. The church will make it through. We just want to make sure that we're not shaken out as things are shaken up. Ooh, that'll preach. Psalms 11. When the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? What I want to look at um, over the next couple of moments here is I want to look at the pattern of the house. And when I, when I speak about the house, we looked again last week, and we talked about we are no longer strangers and foreigners, but we are fellow citizens um, with the saints and members of the household of God. God is, is building his church. Church is referred to as a house. It is a household. The son of David was going to come, and he was going to build a house. You'll remember that David wanted to build a, a temple for God, but he couldn't. Because he had blood on his hands. But he said, but your son Solomon, he's going to build the house. And we're going to look at that in, in, in just a moment. But I want to lay this foundation about patterns. When you, when you begin to find patterns in the word of God, God's revealing one of his ways. Uh, the scripture says that the children of Israel saw God's works, but Moses knew his ways. I would rather know the ways of God than just see his works because we can see the works of God and not understand God's ways. But when we understand God's ways, we can always see his works. In fact, we will be involved in those works. Jesus did say greater works than these shall you do because I'm going back to my father. And when the comforter has come, <laughs> y'all still with me? Exodus chapter 25 is where we're going to start. You remember that when God brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, he led Moses up a mountain. And God had this conversation with Moses, and he said to Moses in Exodus chapter 25, he said, let them, well, I'm going to read verse 1 because I think this is, I'm going to read verses 1 and 2, then we're going to skip down to verse 8. But it said, the Lord said to Moses, tell the Israelites to bring me an offering. You are to receive the offering from me from everyone whose heart prompts them to give. Y'all remember God told the Israelites, I'm getting ready to deliver you, but I want you to go to all your neighbors and I want y'all to borrow some stuff. And the Bible says when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, they spoiled the Egyptians. So they came out of Egypt. They had all of this stuff. And so God gets them out into the wilderness. He said, now Moses, the children of Israel, has all this stuff that I've given them. So I want you to take an offering from the people. In other words, those things that I've given them, those gifts, somebody say gifts, yeah. that I have given them, I want you to take an offering from them to me. I gave them gifts, I want them to give the gifts back to me. Y'all with me so far? Do you all know that each and every one of you are gifted? But God, but God didn't gift us for us. We're talking about the pattern of the house. Y'all stay with me. <laughs> Give a, take an offering from me from everyone whose heart prompts them. Another translation says from everyone that's willing. 
which is why God kept trying to tell the children of Israel, if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the lamb. That's another message, though. Verse 8 says, then have them make a sanctuary for me, and I will dwell among them. Make the tabernacle and all its furnishings. Hmm. Exactly like the pattern that I show you. According to all that I show you after the pattern, somebody say pattern, pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall you make it. Note, God said, I want them to make me a tabernacle, but I want you to make the tabernacle according to the pattern that I show you. So in other words, God has the pattern. Y'all with me? God has the pattern. He says, now take an offering from the people so they can build the tabernacle, but I'm going to give you the pattern. So yes, I want you to build it. I want your gifts involved, but you have to build it according to the pattern I show you. So So in other words, tell the people they can't come up with their own pattern. I have the pattern. Y'all with me? I I have the pattern. I'm going to give you the pattern. Follow the pattern. Remember last week we talked about the woman that built the dress. Y'all remember the dress? Okay. According to the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments. Now, in Exodus chapter 39, it says in verse 42, now, according to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so the children of Israel made all the work. Note, according to all that the Lord commanded Moses, what did God command Moses to tell the children? Make the tabernacle according to the pattern. So the children of Israel, according to what the Lord commanded Moses. Boy, I just stopped there for a minute. I'm trying to stay on track. It's interesting. God gave Moses the pattern to give to the people. Then they did according to all that the Lord commanded Moses. So the children of Israel made all the work. I would imagine there was a few folk in the bunch. And Moses did look upon all the work and behold, I I love this. They should make a real movie out of this. And Moses looked upon all the work and behold, they had done it as the Lord had commanded Even so had they done it, and Moses blessed them. Oh, didn't say God blessed them. It said Moses blessed them. It's an interesting thing about the blessing of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord flows down. God blesses, and whomever God blesses, then they can bless. Which is why he told Abraham... I will bless you, and you shall be a blessing. Are are y'all following me here? So when when God blesses you, you in turn can now bless others. But remember, it flows down. In other words, you can't give what you don't have. We're talking foundations here. I'm just a delivery. I'm just a delivery man. I'm, 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 just, I'm, just, I'm just giving you the good news. Moses looked upon all the work, and behold, they had done it as the Lord had commanded. Even so had they done it, and Moses blessed them. Right? They built the tabernacle. Now, this verse isn't in in the notes either, but write this down. Exodus chapter 40, verse 34, and I'm going to read it. God gave Moses the pattern. Moses gave the pattern to the people. The people built according to the pattern. 
Moses looked at the work. The work was finished. They built it according to the pattern. Y'all got the picture. Moses blessed them. All right. Exodus chapter 40, verse 34. Then the cloud covered the tent of the meeting. Y'all remember we talked about the cloud a couple weeks ago? The cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses could not enter the tent of meeting because the cloud had settled on it. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. When did the glory of the Lord fill the tabernacle? After the work was completed. But they built the tabernacle according to the pattern. Based on foundations, if they hadn't have built the tabernacle after the pattern, the glory wouldn't have filled the tabernacle. You build it according to the pattern, then God shows up and enters in and fills the tabernacle. Moses went into the tabernacle after the glory filled the tabernacle, and Moses, <laughs> the Bible said, Moses, Moses now could not enter the tent of meeting because the cloud had settled yes. on it. Yes. The glory of God was so thick. Ooh, well, I felt that when I said it. It was so thick, Moses couldn't even enter. The presence of the Lord was so strong on the tabernacle, Moses couldn't even enter it. Flesh can enter the glory. Y'all still with me? Yes, Flesh cannot enter the glory. That's why the Bible said we have a better covenant. Yes, that's right. Moses wasn't born again. Moses couldn't enter glory. Glory could come on Moses. Glory could kind of show up and leave. But Moses couldn't carry glory. They left that for the new covenant folk. That's you and me. We carry the glory. Y'all right. don't hear me. Hallelujah. And as I always say when I start getting to this point, I just heard a voice say, preach it, son. <laughs> That's Moses in the tabernacle. Moses built the tabernacle. Gave, Moses, gave, got, Moses got the pattern, gave the pattern to the people. The people built, God showed up. That's a pattern. Somebody say, That's a pattern. That's a pattern. What's the pattern? God gives the pattern. Whoever he gives the pattern to, gives it to the people. The people do it, and then God shows up. That's the pattern. My, 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 my. First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 10, verse 11. Just to show this just isn't something that happened with Moses. Let's, let's see if we can find something else that happened. David was getting ready to, to leave. He was getting ready to to transition. And so now David, having been told by the prophet he could not build God a house, David is going to pass the mantle. Somebody say the mantle. He's going to pass the mantle over to his son. David, you can't do it, but your son can. It's not going to happen in your generation. It'll happen in the next generation. Amen. That's my grand boy. He got it. It's not going to happen in your generation. It's going to happen in the next generation. See, there are some things didn't happen in a former generation, but it's going to happen in this generation. God does not change. Take heed now, for the Lord has chosen you. This is David talking to Solomon. New level of leadership. <laughs> God said, David, you did good. You routed all the enemies out of the land, David. You went in, David. You conquered the land. You established the kingdom. But you can't build the tabernacle. There's some stuff, David, that's assigned to you, and some stuff ain't. There's some things I've chosen that generation for that that's what they're responsible for. Yes. 